Hi, and welcome to week two of our Forgiving What You Can't Forget online Bible study. I'm Melissa Taylor, and again, I'm joined with author Lisa Turkhurst. How are you doing, Lisa? I am well. Thank you, Melissa. Good, good. Thanks for coming back. Good to be with you again this week. Thank you. I'm so excited about this study. And, you know, I, I always say that with a little bit of hesitation because um, the reason someone picks up this book is because they've been hurt. And so I always want to just acknowledge that, that while we're excited to do the study, I'm, I'm so sorry for whatever reason it is that has, whatever's happened to you, right. you know, that, that has caused you to be interested in this forgiveness journey. But I'm so grateful. I'm, I'm, I really want to say too, that when I was writing this book, I left a um, empty chair at the table. And so you'll notice oh, when yes. you read, yes. welcome to the gray table. Right. Um, it's because I thought about you all the way through the writing of this message. And my heart was so tender, not just because of the pain that I was processing and trying to heal from, but because I know you've got pain in your life too. And so as we step into this study and we really start to make progress here, it's not always going to be easy, but we can get through this we together. Can get through this. Well, and I love this week, you guys are going to read about one of Lisa's counseling sessions. And I love that you share how you went to counseling because that just makes, gives me kind of courage to say, it's okay to go to counseling, all right? It's yeah. not a sign of weakness. I really think it's a sign of strength. I do too, and I'm not really sure where the stigma came from of, you know, you shouldn't go Ooh, to, counseling to counseling or whatever. Yeah, I wrong? have a great Christian counselor, but I very much recognize that not everyone has access to a great Christian counselor. And so I wanted to provide some of those insights that I gained in counseling to help people that maybe they don't have access to counseling or maybe their counselor isn't as versed as my counselor was in forgiveness. Well, and you even go through an activity in chapter four from one of your counseling sessions that really you go through it in such detail, it makes it possible for us to do this ourselves. Tell us about that session. Well, I think this is one of the most holy exercises I've ever done. So sometimes I think when people think of counseling, they think we're separating emotional healing and spiritual truth, and that's not true. The reason I love what my counselor encouraged me to do is it was really bringing both of those together at the same time, and it gave me a practical way to apply biblical truth. And so when, you know, we alluded to last week when right. I went to my counselor and he said, do you want to heal? And I was like, yes, I definitely want to heal. And then he said, well, today's a good day to start working on forgiveness. And I thought, are you crazy? Like, no, I can't work on forgiveness. And so eventually where we landed is he said, okay, well, let's just start with the pain. And he handed me a stack of three by five cards. And he said, why don't you just write one thing on each card? of how you were wounded or hurt or you know something that was causing you angst deep inside of you. And I thought, okay, I can do that. And so I started writing one thing on each card of something that had happened that caused me pain. It was really listing out all the facts of what happened. And it, it was such a great exercise, just that part of it right. even, because I'd kept so much of what was causing me to hurt. I kept so much of it locked inside. And it's not that I was stuffing it. It's I didn't know what to do with it. And people would say, like, you need to get it all out. But how do you how get do you it all that? out, yeah. you know? And then what, what is somebody supposed to do, like, when you're trying to get it all out? Like, what is somebody supposed to do? Like, you know, sometimes when a friend is pouring their heart out, you don't always know what to say. and. I didn't want to put my friends in that awkward dynamic. And I was talking to my friends, but like getting all the pain out, I wasn't sure. Right. But when Jim had me do this exercise and I was writing all the cards down, um, when I got to the very last one, and there was probably 40 cards laid out on his office floor, he looked at me and he said the very best thing that someone could say. He said, I believe you. And he just dared to bear witness to that pain. And if no one else has ever done that for you today, I want to do that for you. Friend, I believe you. I believe what happened that hurt you was wrong. It should not have happened. 
and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that they did what they did or they said what they said or they didn't say what they should have. I'm so sorry that they stayed and hurt you or that they walked away, whatever the case is. I am so, so sorry. But I'm more convinced than ever that you deserve to stop suffering because of what another person has done to you. And the only way to sever the source of suffering is through this beautiful gift that God has given the hurting human heart, and that's forgiveness. And Melissa, I also want to say, you know, when dealing with forgiveness, another thing that was good about this exercise is that there's always a scale to pain. Mm -hmm. And so I could see someone saying, well, I don't need to do this exercise, writing out all my pain because my pain was much, much smaller mm -hmm. than maybe my friend's pain or your pain, Lisa, or Melissa's pain or whatever. And I just want to say, you know, no matter what, pain in the context of what hurts you is consuming at times. And so don't minimize or trivialize what you've been through. If it hurt you, right. it's it worth hurt you. Right. tending to. Right. And whether you consider your pain an inconvenience or something small or something huge, catastrophic, life-altering, forgiveness applies to both. And anytime you've been wounded, there's an emotional debt that's created there. And that's why Jesus teaches us to forgive those who have created these debts. And he really refers to them as debts. And that's so true because there is a cost to every wounding. So when Jim had me lay out the facts of how um, I was hurt, he um, then had me do the exercise of going card by card by card and saying out loud, having a marked moment, I forgive this person for the fact of what happened. And then he handed me a little stack of red pieces of felt. And he said, and just lay down a piece of felt on top of it, symbolizing. I love this part. That even if you don't feel like forgiving, mm -hmm. that the heavy lifting, the hard work of forgiveness has already been accomplished by what yes. Jesus did right. on the cross. Right. And that's, you know, I'm an over talker yeah. <laughs> when I'm in counseling. And that's what I was saying to Jim, like, Jim, I don't want to feel fake about this. Yeah. And he said, no, Lisa, just lay the piece of red felt down. And after you say, I forgive this person for this fact of how they hurt me, then lay the red piece of felt down and say, and whatever my feelings will not yet allow for, the blood of Jesus will surely cover it. Mm -hmm. And I did that card by card by card. And whatever my feelings will not yet allow for, the blood of Jesus will surely cover. And the beautiful thing is when I got to the very last card and I turned around, the pain wasn't staring me back anymore. You know, it wasn't the pain staring back at me. It was the representation that Jesus has covered this and he will carry me through it. And even though at that point there was still going to be emotional processing, right. um, that marked moment of forgiveness did not feel like an unfair gift I was giving to someone else. It truly felt like God's gift to my hurting human heart. I love that so much. It's so complicated, but yet what a beautiful visual to see it. And then there's also a simplicity to it, but it doesn't end there. It's like you said, you didn't just walk away and be like, okay, I forgave all of these things. Jesus' blood is going to cover what my feelings aren't there yet. But then even a month down the road, two months down the road, six minutes, down six the minutes road. down the road, <laughs> six years down the road, right. there's still things that are going to bring back what you forgave. Yes. And aren't you tempted to hold on to that and be there all over again? What do you do with those triggers? Right. So when you get triggered in your pain, um, it can feel like maybe I'm for a forgiveness failure or maybe forgiveness doesn't work for me because you think if I've forgiven, I shouldn't have these hard feelings. But what we have to understand is that forgiveness is both a decision and a process. And so I had walked through the decision to forgive for the facts of what happened.
But now I have to walk through the process of forgiving for the impact that this has all had on me. That's that emotional debt we were talking about. There's a cost to this. And I think we've done people a disservice when we just say, forgive and forget. Right, because we're told that, move on. Exactly, yeah. forgive and forget, move on. Yeah. Don't ever Get bring over it, it up. Right. Exactly. And I guess what my counselor helped me see, and in all those hours of studying in the Bible, I started to recognize, no, God leaves space for emotional processing and emotional healing, and that's okay. Forgiveness does mean that you forgive for the fact of what happened, and then it also means that you have to walk through the emotional healing process to forgive for the impact. And so when triggers happen, it's just letting you know there's more pain to be tended to, and it's time for another marked moment of forgiveness. And then I just literally will have to stop wherever I'm at and say, okay, this is helping me become aware of how this has affected me, the impact that this wounding had on me. And so I need to forgive now. I need to have a marked moment of forgiveness for this anxiety or this fear or, you know, this chaos that's happening right. or this emotional meltdown that I feel right. like I'm going right. to have, whatever. Um, but I do want to say it's normal it's normal. These triggers are not evidence that you're a forgiveness failure. They're not a setback. They really are a setup to help make you aware that there's more healing work that needs to happen. Well, and I love how you really did a good job of telling that story because you talk about at one point, I don't know, you have a freak out moment and there's a delivery girl at the front door like watching yes. you have this freak out moment and if you are that delivery girl <laughs> please forgive me i am so so sorry hi she's just like hey, honestly <laughs> did not see her i was just having a moment and i was slamming the door and slamming the door and slamming the door and then all of a sudden i see her standing on the porch holding this package and her eyes were like as big as saucers and i didn't know what to do and she didn't know what to do so she laid the package down and gets in her truck and drives away and I just remember thinking, I need to chase after her and offer her a cookie, something. <laughs> right. But you know, it's like, we can laugh about that now. Wasn't funny that day for no. sure. We can laugh about that now. But you also talk about a little bit later is how you start to make the choices in your reactions and for your own health, That's you know, right. to be able to stop and process or maybe withdraw or quit talking or do something, whatever you have to do, getting God's word to, um, to, um, get through it in a different way. Yeah, and something I didn't write in the book that I want to give this to you because I think this will really help. When you get triggered in your pain, this is a physiological situation. I mean, this is normal. What's happening is the amygdala part of our brain where our trauma is stored. Say has that again, the what part of our brain? The amygdala. Amygdala. Yes. Okay. You right. can I thought you it. said something like that, but yes. I wasn't sure. The amygdala, amygdala part, part of, of your our brain. brain. Okay. That's where our deep emotions, our trauma is stored. So when that gets triggered, it immediately makes that kick in of that fight, flight, freeze. Yes. I yeah. added freak out because right. that's obviously what I do. <laughs> um, but that's sort of when your, your logical thinking has shifted into emergency reaction mode, you know? And so you've got to give yourself just a few minutes. And here are three things that will help tremendously if you get okay. triggered in pain. Number one, recognize it takes 20 minutes for that amygdala to calm down and for your logical thinking to come back on. on. Oh, wow. So don't make big judgments about your life in that 20 minutes. Don't make phone calls in that oh. 20 minutes. Don't make accusations. Don't definitely, don't even get your phone. Don't even look Do at your phone. Do not get on social media yeah. in that 20 minutes. And, and don't make a judgment of how horrible your life is in that 20 minutes. Just recognize I need a 20 minute pause right here or I need to just put myself in kind of a space of maybe I do need to turn on some praise music. I like to walk outside. Sometimes I even take my shoes off. I look up into the sky and remind myself the sky is not falling because I have such a propensity to like drive it all the way to worst case scenario, right? So that's one thing. Give yourself 20 minutes. Take a walk. Do some deep breathing. Get in, you know, read the word if you want to. Listen to praise music, whatever. But 20 minutes is really important. Drink, number two, four ounces of water. 
Four ounces of water has been proven to reduce our anxiety level. Who knew? I've how, never heard that. How have yeah. I gone 51 years of life and right. never knew? Drink four ounces of water Drink and it will help you, wow. right? Yeah. And number three, give yourself some grace and just say to yourself out loud, the world is not ending. My life is not falling apart. This one area may fall apart or this one area may be crashing or this one area, but the sum total of my one incredible life is not ruined. I can have a bad day. I can have a bad season. I can have some bad years, yeah. but that does not mean that I have a bad life. And I think it's so important that we coach ourselves and remind ourselves, don't start buying into the enemy's lies. Remember what the enemy does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we do not need to have thinking that aligns with anything that he is pitching to us because his attacks are lies. He oh, is the father of lies. That is so good. Are you not so glad that you watched this video to the end today? Because now I know I have amygdala in there somewhere. And But just everything you just said about those three steps that are not in the book, you guys, but just to help you get through and... Um, Everything else that we're going to be reading this week, this is just, we are in for a great week. So you guys, go ahead, map out some time, go ahead and put it in your schedule, carve out some time to read your chapters this week and to be able to open your Bibles and get into God's Word. And we are going to have a great week too. Thank you so yes, much. Absolutely. Thank you. And you guys, don't forget, God's Word, that is the truth. That is what we need. Like we need it. And when you know the truth and live the truth, it, it really does change everything. everything. That's right. You guys have a great week. Lisa, thanks for joining us again. Thank you.